Hello guys, welcome back. It is Thursday afternoon and we're back with another IG Live. Today's topic will be body contouring after massive weight loss. And we'll have a special guest, Desi Augusto. He's one of our patients who's gone through a tremendous transformation. And so we get to hear so first, first person perspective about her transformation, the path through the weight loss and then the body contouring after the weight loss. So I see she just joined us. I'm gonna uh, get her to join in. Awesome, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for taking time to come and chat with us. So No problem. Just to introduce you, Desiree is one of our patients as I mentioned previously. She uh, went through a dramatic weight loss transformation. Uh, and after that, she came to us and had a body contouring procedure, uh, tummy and breast. And I wanted to invite her today to talk to us to get a so first, first person perspective about her journey. Um, about uh, a patient who went through weight loss and then the body contouring. Um, it's interesting to hear from someone, you know, on, on, their, on their own words on what they went through. And I also want to highlight the, the importance of the weight loss before surgery. We often get a lot of people contacting us uh, who misunderstand cosmetic surgery and think that cosmetic surgery is really like weight loss surgery. There's a lot of pictures out there that show these dramatic transformations. You see um, surgery accounts showing these beautiful transformations of someone's like really, really large uh, to a completely transformed body, but you, you miss the part in between, which is the weight loss. You can't really go from somebody who's a BMI of 50, mm -hmm. look like you BMI of 18. There's no amount of cosmetic surgery that can really do that. So there's a first step where the patient has to do things on their own. And then once they've done their part, then you come to a surgeon and the surgeon does the cosmetic reconstructive body contouring procedure. So I'll let you take over for a little bit. Maybe you can tell us about your journey, um, um, where you started, how you started, what, what inspired you to go through the weight loss transformation. And then uh, after you lost the why, why did you decide that you wanted to go ahead and have uh, body contouring procedures? Okay, so rewinding quite a number of years, um, mainly through my teens. Like once I turned into a teenager, I gained weight and it just, as the years went on, it packed on and on and on. And a lot of people, they tend to do it as like the mommy makeover after they have kids and whatnot. But I was actually a rather big girl before I had my daughter. Mm -hmm. So I spent my whole life always doing something. I always enjoyed exercise, but I was always large. Mm -hmm. um, I made very poor um, choices with my eating habits and those such of things. And that's why it led to what it did. So prior to what I found that worked for me, I did um, martial arts and running and a lot of that kind of stuff for many years, but I consistently overate and ate the wrong things. So I started doing um, Kangoo, Kangoo jumps, which is like these bouncing boots and mixing that with a clean diet. I it's been drilled into me now and now I understand how it all works and it's been drilled into me like i have to put in what i put out kind of thing you know what i mean exactly. and so i worked really hard uh for about four years with the kangoo and strength training lots of cardio lots of lifting weights and lots of paying attention the biggest thing is like reading the labels paying attention be be accountable for what you put in and then be accountable for what you put out like it has to even out mm -hmm. eventually you know um and then prior to that, I always did say, you know, I just want to lose weight. I just want to be small. I just want to be like that girl. I want to be like this girl. And even like that is fine. You know, I was always just so big. And then I never thought I would ever lose the weight. And then I also thought if I did lose the weight, you know, I always had these really, really big breasts. And I always thought, you know what, if I lost some of them, that would be okay. I wouldn't be upset about it. Well, let me tell you. The bigger everything is, the harder everything falls. Gravity yeah. is a serious thing, and everything kind of sagged. My belly, um, I'm fortunate with my legs, I guess. The skin laxity there is still okay, and my arms as well. But mainly my belly and my breasts, it was mm -hmm. like, it got to the point of my breasts, like I'd be running up the stairs, and they, they would applaud for me, you know? The, the skin <laughs> would just... <laughs> good job girl you made it up the stairs you know so I quickly changed my train of thought and I thought you know what maybe it does kind of upset me that they're gone 
and maybe I don't like the way it looks, you know, it was just a lot of skin. And um, that's when I started really contemplating it. I had known quite a few friends that had gone through similar things, like where they had either lost weight or the baby stretched everything out and they never had a bad experience. A lot of people that I spoke to really, you know, helped me like feel comfortable with it because it was never really on my radar until it was on my radar, really. And then I watched um, your Snapchat religiously <laughs> and I interviewed a few different surgeons and I just kept coming back to you and I went and I did it. You know, I didn't even think twice. I just kind of was like, okay, this is what I'm doing. I love the results I'm seeing. And that's what I did. And I knew that once I put that in my mind, that I'd want to go in as with as low BMI as possible. Reason for that, for me personally, I wanted to be able to grab as much skin as we could without having to go in and do a lot of lipo and a lot of all that other stuff. You know, I figured the less we went in and aggravated things, the easier it was going to be for me. And then coming out of surgery, I knew I was going to be sitting still for a really long time. You know what I mean? So I wanted to actually come in under my ideal. And I did. I came in about five or six pounds under what I ideally like to sit at. And I was told. What was your what was your heaviest weight? What was the max you ever reached in terms of your weight? Well, uh, that being said, I'm only four foot ten, so I'm really short. And I was probably, I couldn't tell you 100%, but somewhere in the 170 range. Okay. So, and what was your weight uh, at the time of your surgery? Do you remember how much did you drop? 98 pounds. 98 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. So, and I like to sit uh, at about 102, 103, 104. I, I, I can't do the calculation off the top of my head, but do you remember what was your BMI uh, on your surgical day? I believe it was like 20 or 21. 21. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. So, like you said, you know, you, you were inspired to lose as much weight as possible before surgery because you wanted to make it easy on yourself. And I tell my patients, the more weight you lose, the easier it is for me to give you nice results. Uh, someone like you who's down to 20, 21 BMI, has very little extra fat, it's mostly loose skin. And so mm -hmm. you're able to really trim the skin very nicely. You don't have to worry about uh, liposuction in areas. That really makes it easier for me to give you a nice result. So I do encourage my patients to try to lose as much weight as possible. Um, you know, uh, people sometimes uh, do, do try to lose weight, but they say that just no matter what they, how hard they try, they just cannot, they've been exercising, do all these other things. Two points that are really, really crucial that I think a lot of people don't realize. There is no amount of exercise that you can do to correct all the Twinkies and chocolate that you eat. Diet no. is so much no. more important than exercise. It's 100%. I'm not, I'm not discouraging anyone from exercising, but you have to be aware of what you're taking in. Uh, and like you said, calories in, calories out. It's all, again, the same kind of thing. The, the amount of calories going in minus the calories going out is what's gonna affect your weight. Um, some people have a faster metabolism, some people have a slower. So people with slow metabolism may, may find it more difficult to lose the weight, but the numbers mm -hmm. are very simple. So you gotta find mm -hmm. a way of stimulating your metabolism. Now, this is difficult for most people. If, if you can't figure this out on your own, see a nutritionist, she, have, see a, um, uh, see, she has a, a, a professional that can help you, but it's a simple math. Calories in, calories out. Yeah, that's right. So what was your thing? What, what did you do to lose the weight? What was your little trick? Um, it was definitely, it had to be the, the calorie, watching my calories. Um, I kept it at a deficit. So I made sure my biggest thing and my trainer and very good friend will tell you the same thing. Um, if you have like some idea of being able to track what you're putting in calorie wise. So I used a Fitbit mm -hmm. and I just kind of kept track on the Fitbit app of everything. You know, I made sure that my calories were always every single day, like that I burnt more than I took in. Like that has to be. And then the biggest thing I can say is, um, you know, this isn't like this week. It's not next month. It's not like even just this year. You know, you got to do this forever. This isn't something that it's not like, okay, you know, let's do this for a while and drop 30 pounds. And then we're going to go back and we're going to like drink beer and eat donuts and eat this and that. And like every now and again, we'll have something healthy. It doesn't work like that. It'll just creep back. You don't do all this to be able to eat an extra sleeve of cookies. 
you know, you don't do this. You have, like, to you, have to do you have to be measuring everything. You're looking at your calories. I don't know if you did this, but I, a good thing is for people, measure your weight every day, every same time yeah. of day, early in the morning, measure your weight. In the morning. Um, yeah. And you can see it go up and down. If you, for example, go up, it'll just be a little more stimulation. You know, be a little more careful the following day. Take it yep. really easy. Because if you're not paying attention, it is so easy to fall off the wagon to just not notice what's happening and just the no. weight kind of creeps up again. It has to be a lifestyle. Like we, we say this so much at the gym, like a lot of people, um, I teach a class one day a week um, where I joined, like I joined there, I'll be six years ago. And I always said, I, I won't teach it. I love it too much that if I start teaching it, I'm scared that I'll, I'll, you know, like lose love with it. That didn't happen. I mm -hmm. love teaching it. It's like, even like so much more thrilling and everybody that comes in they say you know i've seen your stories on um on becky's page and and you know you're so inspiring and i'm like and you know what that was six years ago i started this like you can do it too it didn't take me six years but here i am i'm six years i still love it and you know what it's i love it because i feel good you know it doesn't really have much to do about how i look or anything like that but like when you're done like you feel accomplished like even if you had a crappy day you got that out. It's, you know, you got that energy out and you can move forward and be positive about it. It's, it's just good all around, in my opinion. I'm, I'm noticing that the word Nutella is trending up there. People know me. It's my weakness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I try to keep it down just a little bit of Nutella. Uh, we have so many people <laughs> in the office. Um, our patients know that I love Nutella. So we, we, we just have jars. People are bringing jars. And my jars daughter, so. too. My yeah, daughter eats it. It's a job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so it's it's my little weakness, but uh, yeah, you you just you know once in a while you can have a cheat day. Uh, you can reward yourself with a little cheat. Absolutely. Uh, but overall, stay on top of it. You have to. How long did it take you to lose all this weight? So was it a, was it you said a four year process? So I was there for four years before I decided on the um, surgery aspect. Okay. I would say. I would say within, like, I did my, the biggest chunk of my losing within the first year. Within the first year, because I had gone there and I wasn't at my heaviest anymore. I had already lost maybe 25, 30 ish pounds. Mm -hmm. um, but I've lost a good 50, 45, 50 just there alone. And that happened within the first year easily. Um, and within the first six months, to be honest, I was like, feeling the same way I felt about everything else, you know, like, okay, we're going to do this. It's fun. I'm going to lose a little bit of weight. And you know what? Actually, I started losing like nine pounds at this check-in and like 10 pounds at that check-in. And I was like, oh my God, this is working. So then as I got going, I really started cleaning up my diet and then it was just falling off. So I'd say it took me about a year to do the 50 for sure. Um, and then just keeping it off has been maintenance now. So yeah. by the time I reached year four, I was like, there was really nothing left to lose. And I really needed to start like fixing all the damage <laughs> for sure. So we, we mentioned previously, but it's, it's, it's important to keep track, keep track of your calories, weigh yourself every day. Uh, it allows you to stay on top so you don't fall off. At the same time, it also gives you positive reinforcement. You see, you see improvement every day. You see a little bit of an improvement. A yeah, extra weight off. And that's, that's, you know, positive feedback loop. You just feel better and you just be motivated to go more and more and more. Um, yeah. So you've gone through all this and, and like you said, you've, you've lost your weight and then you, you were sort of sitting at your weight for a while before you decided to run, go ahead with the surgery. So was that the four year period? So you were at your low, low weight about four, four years? Yeah, it was about three and a half, four years. And I was at about, I was at about probably about a hundred pounds, 103 in and around there. And I was happy with that. Why do you, it think, was just, why do you think it was a four year period between you losing the weight and then finally deciding to go ahead with the surgery? What, what was the the space or were you not aware that the surgery was possible? Were you not concerned about the um, extra skin? What was it? Well, uh, okay. So that's a good question. So I was on holidays with my family and, you know, I spent so much time actually losing the weight and I spent so much time building this self that I was supposed to be so happy about. And then we were on the beach and I was wearing a bathing suit. And every time I bend over, like my boob skin would fall out, like the whole thing, like out of my top, you know, like I bend over and we're like, oh, well, you know, let's roll that back up and put it back in. And then <laughs> my bottoms as well, like I'd be having bottoms on and I'm like, okay, well, where do I tuck the skin? Like, where does this go? You know, like it just, I was at a point in my life where here I am. It's my first grown up adult trip 
back to Europe to enjoy. And I'm not enjoying myself because I can't, you know, I can't even stand what's going on. So as soon as I came back, actually, before I came back, I was, I was actually in Portugal. I decided, I was like, yeah, that's it. And Dr. Six is a guy. <laughs> that, that's what happened. That's what really led me to it. Okay. Um, it's a good point to make. Uh, this is not uncommon. Um, a lot of weight loss patients, nasty weight loss patients kind of describe a similar story. They go through this and dramatic weight loss and they're really happy about this but then they realize that you know they have cosmetic issues that they don't look so well and they get demoralized and it affects them negatively um unfortunately that there's no way around it when you lose all that weight you are left with a lot of loose skin now people that lose weight very early on usually you know closer you are to your 18 years 18 age uh the better you bounce back your skin is more elastic but the mm-hmm. older you are the less likely is is it for the skin to retract and come back so you left left with a lot of loose skin some people tremendous amount, some people less, but there's always a little laxity. And then people feel demoralized. Um, and some people even say, you know, I'd rather not lose the weight or they, they wish the weight went back. And I, I, I would say to that, you know what, um, the weight loss is good. P- people that are morbidly obese and need to lose weight. It's going to yes. increase your, your life expectancy is going to go up. Your heart, uh, heart disease is going to go down. Your blood pressure is going to come down. Your potential diabetes may be cured with the weight loss. There's a lot of medical benefits to the weight loss. The cosmetic downside to the weight loss is there, absolutely. And, and that's where cosmetic surgery comes in and where cosmetic surgeons can help you to remove all the extra skin. Now, topic of cosmetic surgery after weight loss is you need to understand there are two things. One, wherever you have a lot of loose skin, we can take it off, but you're going to be left with a scar. And you mm-hmm. need to decide what's going to bother you more, having the loose skin or the scar. And the second thing is, unfortunately, once the skin has been stretched out, the elastic fibers, the elastins have been damaged, the elasticity is not the same as somebody who's never had the extra weight. So mm-hmm. no matter how much skin tightening procedures you will have, you will have a perfectly tight body. The goal is to make you look good. The goal is not to turn back the clock, do the, press the undo button and make you look like you never had the extra weight. No. So you may look good, but you'll always be able to go and pinch the skin and pull on it. And sometimes I have people come back and say, but you know, I can still pinch here, I can still pinch there. When I bend over, I have these folds. Unfortunately, there's only so much body contouring can do. So it's really, really important that people have realistic expectations. Um, Tesri, for example, let, let's talk about you. You ha- you look phenomenal. You know, uh, I haven't seen you a long time, so you haven't been back to the clinic. I just see the pictures you post uh, put on Instagram, and you look amazing. But I bet that even though you look so lean and skinny and fit, you can probably pinch your skin full, and uh, there is some give. It's not like rubber tight kind of skin. Am no. I right? Absolutely, 100%. There'll always be a little bit of skin there. And you know what? That makes us human. You know, like you can't, my my thing going into the surgery, especially is you can't, um, you can't go in wanting to be perfect. Because if you're searching for perfect, it's not out there. You know, it's not out there for anything. Nothing in life is perfect. You know, so if you're searching for perfect, the problems in here, it's not on the outside. You know, so for me, it wasn't about perfect. It was just about feeling better. That's all, you know, like I just, I wanted to put a bathing suit on and not worry about something falling out, you know, yeah. that was it. Like, that, 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 that's a very important concept for everybody to consider when you're coming from body contouring after weight loss or anything. Understand there is no such thing as perfection. You need to have realistic expectations. Understand that there are always going to be little imperfections, no matter how hard you try. Mm-hmm. Well, the real life is not like Instagram. Instagram is all filters, Photoshop, Facebook, and people putting on their best pictures ever. Um, I, I try to repost sometimes pictures. People, you know, show honest pictures of themselves. There's a few times I keep reposting um, that mm-hmm. show uh, the same person posing and not posing. It, it could be a dramatic difference. Yeah. Absolutely. When I post pictures, I really try to show people, like, this isn't filtered, you know? Like, I didn't do anything to this picture to make it look a certain way. Like, this is it. And this is how it is. And I feel like there's just too much fakeness that way out there. Like, yeah. I definitely didn't go for the surgery for the fake aspect of it. And you know what? Like you said, I'm going to touch on that scars thing. You have to be able to be okay with the scars. Like, I have scars, but I mean, they're definitely no worse than the stretch marks or the skin or any of that stuff. And as the years go by, you know, it fades away and it becomes a distant memory. And then you're still left with the happiness that came from it, exactly. you know? So exactly. you, it's a small, it's a small thing to wait there, in my opinion. Yeah. 
and I, I made a little comment there, perfection is subjective, I totally agree. Um, we have patients that look phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, and they're just so unhappy about some little imperfection. I, I, you can barely, barely see it. And, and you know, they're, they're crying in the recovery room. And I'm like, I'm, I'm frustrated because like, I don't know, what, how, how, what do I do? Like, I, there's nothing more I can do. You look, you look absolutely perfect. And then I have patients that, yeah, not exactly perfect. And they are so happy and they love me. Yeah. We, they, their expectations was met. So it's really, really important in your cosmetic surgery consultation is to make sure that you express your, you know, your expectations so that your expectations and your surgeon's ability match up and you can understand the limitations of what a surgeon can and cannot do. So mm -hmm. beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Now, you look amazing. Uh, and again, part of, because, part of this is what I've done and part of it is what you've done. You've done an amazing job losing the weight to get to where you were at the time of your surgery. And also after surgery, you maintain your results. You're very active. Uh, with fitness. Tell us about what you did after the surgery to maintain your results or maybe even to enhance your results. So uh, directly after the surgery, I took um, about 60 saw. At five weeks, I started doing um, a little bit of stuff very carefully, very gently. Um, by week seven, I went back to um, the bouncing, but very carefully again and with three bras because gravity is still gravity. You know what I mean? Just because you lifted them up doesn't mean they're going to stay there. Like, you know, you need to be careful. You need to take care of your investment. And so um, I just pretty much went back to my routine of minimum six hours a week of working out and watching what I ate the entire time leading up to my surgery. I'd say the full eight weeks prior and eight weeks after I did not put a single dirty calorie in my body. Like I only ate clean, 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 clean the whole time. Cause I knew post-surgery was going to put weight on me. And I know it's something that's going to come off, but I know the numbers are going to mess with me, especially cause I can't work out. <laughs> so I made sure my eating was hundred percent clean. Um, I made sure I was drinking lots of water. And even now, like even now I don't, yeah, there's a cheat day. Like it maybe happens once in a while, but um, I'm very strict on myself with what I eat, what I don't eat, especially what I don't eat. I don't, the carbs are like, they're out the window. Um, and now like, I just make sure I work out every day. We're on quarantine. So it's really messed up my routine. That's been really, really hard. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I make sure that I do at least an hour every day. It might not be my regular routine where some days I do two hours and then I'll skip a day. I just, at this point, make sure I get at least an hour in every day. Let's talk about your surgery. Mm -hmm. Walk us through your surgical day. Uh, a lot of people may look at you and say, you, wow, you look amazing. I want to get the same thing done, but they may be scared of having surgeries. Can you recall what happened to you? Absolutely. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was so excited. Um, we actually snapped my surgery so that I could watch it over and over after, and I still have it saved on my phone, and I still watch it from time to time. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. So I arrived, I stayed the night before and I was early cause I was excited. I was the first one on the table and I came in and, um, we did the measurements okay. and first actually the nurse took me in. She asked me if I was nervous or if I needed something like to calm myself. And I joked with her and I told her, I'm like, you know what? I'm not nervous whatsoever. I'm ready. Um, I didn't need anything at all, to be honest. I was just, I was really excited to be there. So I came in, she put me in the room, um, and then you came in and you just, you did your markings and we got all ready and they took me into the room. They put me on the table and they asked me if I had any concerns. And actually I joked with them a bunch too, because I had a little cut on my finger and I told him if he could just be careful of my finger. And he's like, oh, he was so sweet. He's like, yeah, for sure. And I was like, I'm just kidding. Like, you're going to be cutting me wide open. I'm really not worried about my finger. <laughs> but honestly, like, from walking in to, I guess, getting wheeled out, because I didn't walk out, that's for sure. But from walking in to the minute I left, it was a great experience. I would totally do it again, except I don't have much left to fix now. <laughs> now, a lot of people are terrified of going under. So I'd love to get your sort of recollection of what happened. Do you remember mm -hmm. falling asleep? And do you remember uh, the time around when you woke up? Like, what, what do you recall from those, those experiences? Okay, so when I fell asleep, um, I actually just remember they said, 
they said, okay, we are going to give you this, like, little prick here, and I'm guessing that was the end of Venus. And then they counted backwards from five, and I don't even remember getting past four, to be honest. It was rather quick. And I wasn't nervous about it at all. Um, she had, like, some heating packs or something on my legs. I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, like, that part was easy. And then <laughs> when I woke up, that was funny, too. Um, the lady was so nice. I can't remember anybody's names, but they were all wonderful. Like, the staff you have there are absolutely, like, top shelf. They're amazing. They're sweet. They're compassionate. And so when I woke up, she's like, Desiree, it's time to open your eyes now. It's time to wake up. And I couldn't open them. They were so heavy. They were so heavy. And I'm like, okay, um, I can't open them yet. And she's like, okay, that's okay. Take your time. And I remember thinking, geez, they feel really heavy. And then I'm like, okay, well, I can't open my eyes yet. I'm like, how do my boobies look? She's like, oh, they look great. <laughs> and then I just continued to talk to her until my eyes opened, and it was fine. Um, I think most people, the anesthesia makes them sick. I only got sick maybe twice, maybe. I don't even remember getting that sick from it. I did get, a, like, there was a couple of dizzy spells, yeah, but... Mm -hmm. Going under was easy. Coming out was fine as well. I mean, everybody probably um, is different. Like their their tolerance levels, I guess, are different. Um, but I think the main thing is if you go in and you're so positive in here and you know it's going to be a good day and you know it's going to be great, then coming out, you're going to wake up the same way. So if you go in scared, terrified, freaking out, that's going to be the last thing you remember. And waking up, you might remember, like, you might wake up that way. And I didn't want that for you're, me. So you're, you're I made sure, like, about that. yeah, like, that, that's, I don't know. I feel that's, like that's I went under. Yeah, I feel like I went under the same way I came out, like, just laughing. <laughs> people that go in in a certain mood come out the same way. So people that go in extra happy come out happy. Patient, we have patients that are anxious naturally, and, and the patients that are anxious sometimes wake up and they're in recovery crying, and they're just uncontrollably crying. There's nothing wrong. They don't have pain. They just emotionally, they, you know, I guess the emotions like kind of when, when they fall asleep kind of reappear when they wake up. And then it takes, it takes a few minutes before them to sort of settle mm -hmm. down and, and feel normal again. Uh, but what, what I'd like to get, yeah, again, sort of go back to your experiences. People are terrified and scared. How scary and how painful was the whole going to sleep and waking up? What, what do you remember from, about that? Um, going to sleep and waking up? That was not scary. That part was, you know what? It felt like the best sleep ever. It's just that you can't remember falling asleep or waking up. But it was just so like, there was nothing scary about it at all. Like in my opinion, I felt like, yeah. you know, I felt like I was going in in good hands and coming out in good hands. So I really, there was, I don't know. Like, it's really not scary. You just kind of fall asleep. like. It's kind of hard to explain, but it really isn't scary. I promise. It, it it is by far the most common fear people have that they experience. That they don't they don't afraid of surgery. They're not afraid of being cut up. They're just afraid of falling asleep and not waking up. Oh wow! It's it's something I've been sort of trying to explore all these years because everybody, almost everybody, has the same kind of fear. And again, just like you described, you kind of people are asked to come back from ten. They never make it to one. They they kind of pass out. Have no recollection what happened. Next thing you know, they're waking up. Um, People sometimes don't remember the initial first 10, 15 minutes when they woke up in recovery. Some people do like you, you know, you're describing, you open your eyes. Some people uh, just remember being wheeled out of the recovery and don't, don't even remember spending an hour in recovery and, and recovering there. Uh, and very commonly people do say, yeah, this is the best sleep I've had. Uh, there's something about the medication, the anesthesia medication makes you feel like you've had this very good, regenerative, yeah. comfortable sleep. So you, you, you wake up so regenerative, so, so great. Uh, people being scared of going under and not waking up. Uh, I tell people, it's, you go to sleep every single day. This is even mm -hmm. better because there's actually a doctor that's monitoring. There's monitors checking your heart rate, your oxygenation, your blood pressure, making sure that you're 100% safe. Our anesthesia doctor is always watching and there's always somebody making sure everything's perfectly fine. And as soon as the internal drugs off and the drugs wear off, you start waking up. So we don't have patients waking up in middle of surgery like you see in horror movies. And we don't have people that don't wake up when we turn the drugs off. So... Hopefully that kind of alleviates some of the fears that people have out there. Uh, in terms of pain, 
um, we give our patients a lot of pain medication before surgery. So before we go into the OR, you get a cocktail of medications to help minimize pain, help minimize nausea, and also during surgery, I put in lots of freezing, the anesthesia doctor puts in lots of pain medication. So when patients wake up, they're comfortable. They, they don't normally have a lot of pain. Sometimes no. they do, but most of the time they do not. Um, I had no pain. Okay. I felt great. Sorry? You felt great. Yeah, I felt great. You had great. a lot done. You had, you had, uh, what, what, can you tell us all the procedures that you had done? So I had a tummy tuck, um, like the with, full with one across the repair? bottom. Uh, we didn't repair. do muscle repair. I left that up to you because um, we weren't sure how, how bad they were going to be, and you didn't feel mm -hmm. they were bad enough to do it. Um, okay. I had a full anchor lift and implant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you did do so a little bit of lipo yeah. on my hips. So if, if people, you know, if you've seen, you know, before and after pictures, you can kind of imagine that's a lot of cutting. It, it's a lot. It seems very, very scary. But, you know, as you can hear from Desiree, it, it, it was, she was comfortable when she woke up. We do everything possible to keep you comfortable. Pain-wise, it really wasn't too bad. Like, even when the pain meds wore off, um, I mean, yeah, there's pain. I'm not going to say there isn't any. Yeah. Um, but I had my surgery on the Monday. By the Friday, I was no longer taking the heavy pain meds anymore. I was maybe taking some Advil or Tylenol. Um, and that was only five days post-op. Like, I, I feel oh. like because I was so healthy and fit, it really, really helped everything just kind of mend really fast. Yeah. So how were the first few days? Were you in bed? Were you up and about? What, what, what kind of activity were you doing? Um, okay, the only up and about I did was bathroom. Um, but I was on the couch because I had to stay bent. So mm -hmm. I did stay on the couch and I had to have help for like to sit up and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was hunched over for a good three weeks that I'm, that I'm going to touch on that. I was like, Oh boy, I wonder how long I'm going to be bent over for. Cause like <laughs> it was tight for a long time, but eventually it did, it did loosen up obviously. Cause it naturally will. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, at home, the first few days, it was fine. I went from like one couch to like a chair, couch to chair, and I but, had to but, keep doing, um, the tightening, right? But you, you were moving, right? So what I wanted to get to is that people sometimes think that you're in bed. Uh, we don't want you to be in bed. We want you to be up and up no. and walk. Even if you go from the bed to a chair, back to your bed, back and forth. Yes. Uh, it is yes. Uh, very, very important that people do that because if you don't, if you stay in bed for a prolonged period of time, you're at risk of blood clots in your legs called deep venous thrombosis, yeah. DVT, which can then cause blood clots to flow into your lungs, obstruct the blood flow to your lungs, which is a serious complication called pulmonary embolism. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. If for some reason you're super weak or super nauseated or uh, just too much pain to move, then wiggle your toes and ankles just to get the blood flow pumping in your legs to, to minimize the risk of these blood clots forming. So just a little sign yeah. there. Very, very important. I always stress to my patients, you must get up and move if you can't wiggle your toes and ankles. I definitely did. Um, I tried to go um, up the stairs because the, the bathroom where the bathtub is, is up a flight of stairs. So there is mm -hmm. up or down. So mm -hmm. there was one flight of stairs in there at least yeah. once in a while, very carefully, yeah. but you have to move. You can't sit still. That is the recipe yeah. for disaster. Uh, after time attack procedure, we want people to be bent over. Sitting position is the best position. That means there's no tension on the incision. So the incision is not being pulled apart and not being pulled up. And so people stay hunched over for two weeks. After two weeks, you start slowly start straightening up and, and your skin is really, really tight. So that's probably what you felt being really, really tight. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, also if I do muscle tightening, that's gonna kind of keep you hunched down. So it can take a while before perfectly straight up, but it's all yeah. by design, it's intentional. The downside of that is people complain of back pain and you will ex expect to have back pain after tummy attack, after being- Oh, yes. And that back pain will go away once it's straight out. So don't, don't get worried yeah. about it. I would actually say the back pain was probably the worst part compared to the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, if you have back pain, expect your back pain is going to get worse. Uh, if people have aches and muscle pains, some, someone like with fibromyalgia, uh, again, uh, you may get worse for two weeks. So uh, talk to your doctor who is managing your back pain or fibromyalgia just to get ready for your surgery. Uh, and they may up your uh, pain medications to control all of these things. Let's move on to life after surgery. So you've been doing amazing after surgery. Um, you're very, very active. Um, um, your Instagram is just phenomenal. Tell us a little bit about life life now that you've shed all this extra skin. What is life like after you got rid of all this extra skin and 
and your 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 breasts don't clap hurrah when you go upstairs no but i clap for them <laughs> um so uh well last year i went back to europe and i was really happy with myself you know i was able to wear the bikinis that i wanted to wear and you know what there might be a little line of a scar but who cares because they're still inside my top and they're not falling out everywhere you know um now um you know fitness for me even before my surgery was a very huge part of my life and it still is now i just really feel that you know if i went and spent all this time and all this money on fixing it after i lost the weight it would be a real waste if i didn't just continue on and so i just set new goals all the time and even if you know there's small goals from today to tomorrow like right now we're in quarantine we're kind of suspended so right now my goal is every day get up and do an hour and then eventually once the picture comes more clear then we'll pick bigger goals and i just try to you know even if it's not a goal like for example the the fitness photo shoot you know like that that happened because um, I go to Becky over back to, to the gym, to the babe cave, and she's like, okay, I was a part of this photo shoot, and you know what? They've given me the opportunity to bring it to here, to my gym, so do you guys want to be a part of it? So, of course, you know, like, I jumped on board. Of course, I'd love to be in a magazine. Are you kidding me? So, that was the new goal. So, now we have four months to get in even better shape to get into this magazine, you know? So, it's just keeping focused and keeping goals no matter how small how big whether it's a five minute goal or a five year goal or a whole bunch of five second goals you know what i mean they have to be there if if you don't have something to work towards then you don't have direction and without direction you're not going to go anywhere uh, there's a question i just saw one by was asking what was your weight now so have you lost any more weight after surgery or did you stay stable or did you go up no, now after surgery, so after surgery, it did kind of do this a little bit because there was a lot of different things that I couldn't do. Like, um, okay, before surgery, my goal was, okay, I'm not going to be able to do bench presses like I used to. So mm -hmm. my goal was, I want to bench press 100 pounds, you know what I mean? So I was, I was doing crazy things, you know, and now I can't do those things anymore. And because some of those things that I can't do, it's kind of like made the weight go up and down. Um, I would say I gained maybe 10 pounds, uh, probably within that year, but it wasn't because I was eating poorly or anything like that. It was just me learning my body again because everything changes, right? It's like, you have to adapt and that's okay because now we have to adapt for this, but your goal is still there, right? It's still the same mental focus. So. I went up, but I came right back down. I just had to relearn what triggered it. That's all. Okay. Uh, there was a question about, about the anchor. Did you call it anchor surgery? Yes, so uh, when people get breast lifts, there's different patterns, incision patterns people can use. You can do what's called lollipop or cortical technique or uh, an anchor where the incision looks like an anchor. So uh, somebody who has tremendous amount of weight loss needs the bigger scar, the bigger surgery, which is the anchor type mm -hmm. breast lift. So that's, that's what we talked about here. You seem very happy and, you know, you, you've set yourself a goal and you achieved the goal. Uh, how would you compare your happiness before and after? So I've always been a pretty happy, positive person. Um, I, I wouldn't say that I was terribly depressed with myself before. Mm -hmm. um, that's a tough one because I wouldn't say I wasn't unhappy i was just more like as I, I was more defeated i was more feeling like are you kidding me like i lost all this weight i always said my entire life even if i lost my boobs and i ended up with nothing that's okay and now i'm here and i'm like it's not okay so crap so i would say that part of me was kind of sad that i had gone through the work and i tried so hard and i succeeded i freaking got there but it was like it's like getting to the finish line but it's like no nah, not quite we're just going to give it to this person instead and you're like what the hell like i just did all that so that made me sad that it kind of felt like i did all this but i'm still like there's still something missing you know 
So the that's reason, what the ultimately. Reason I, the reason I ask is uh, we recently posted one of your before and after pictures. And while, you know, predominant majority was like super impressed and happy for you, there were a few people mm -hmm. that seemed to imply that you seemed happier before than after. So what would you say to people that would think that you may have been happier at your heavier weight than you are now? Well, um, you know, it's a picture. Most people smile for their picture. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. Like I said, I, not that I was like depressed about my weight or anything like that. You know what? I was living with what the cards I was dealt, you know, like these are the cards I got dealt. That's what I was living. You know, I also dealt some of those cards to myself. I made it happen to myself, you know, but there were days and there were lots of times where I would sit there and I'd look down at my belly and I would be like, Oh my God, I can, I can grab the whole thing and shake it. And I would cry about it because it's like, I just ran today. I ran today for five kilometers nonstop, you know? They're just because I smiled in that picture, it doesn't mean that I was fully happy, you know? Like, I did, I lost the weight because I wanted to make me healthier, and I did. And I lost the weight because I want, I didn't want to carry that with me. I didn't want to carry it around. Um, so, I can't say, you know, just based on looking at a picture, like, anybody could say that. You know, you're smiling in that picture. You look happier there than you are today. But you know people saying those things can't define that moment or your feelings what advice would you give to somebody who maybe sort of in, in your shoes and that they've lost tremendous amount of weight now they're left with a lot of loose skin what would you tell them i get this question a lot at the gym um a lot of the girls that um come to becky's a lot of them lose mass amounts of weight like a lot of the ladies that come there are seriously motivational inspirational like all of that like they move mountains these women and a lot of them have seen me go through it and some of them haven't seen me go through it but they look at me and they're like oh you know like what did you do kind of thing and i tell them and they're always shocked and i explain to them because they ask me all these questions all the time i'm like honestly you have to as your own individual self have to decide what's more important you know the scars or not the scars um you know do you, do you can you take that time off of work can you take that time off the gym can you make the accountable time that you need to recoup because you need that you need to have those six weeks of taking care of yourself like a hundred percent and then the most important thing is are you going to do this forever because if you're not going to do this forever to go in there and spend 20, 30, 40, whatever thousand dollars that you're, that you're going to spend to just turn around and waste it. I tried to tell them, A, don't be scared. B, you have to be okay with not being perfect, you know, because it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be you and it's going to be a million times better. I always, always tell them that, you know, it's within yourself. It's not perfect, but it is going to be a million times better. Tell me, do when, when you're in the gym, you're working out, uh, people that don't know you, do, do you ever someone have, have approached you and, and ask about your surgery? Do they like notice your scars or notice that, you know, you, you look like no. you had a tummy tack or something like that, or people can't no. really tell? No, especially my belly button. I get so many compliments on my belly button. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, and it's funny because when I first got the surgery done, a lot of my girlfriends at the gym were like, oh, let me see, let me see, how is it? And I give them updates all the time. And even now, like if somebody comes in and they've been there a while and they're asking me my opinion on it and my advice on it because they've heard through so-and-so that I did this or I've told them. And sometimes we go around the room and we talk about our story at the gym. Um, you know, they'll ask me like, what are the scars like? Or what was this like? What was that like? I'll show them. I really have no problem um, showing them my scars because A, they're not that bad. And B, you know, it's so much better than what was there before. Like, I really, it's hard to explain. Like, it's just, I have absolutely no regrets about it. None, none whatsoever. Awesome. If you're watching this after, or if I missed your question, please send us a DM uh, or I'll leave a question in the comments. We'll do our best to answer all these questions. Um, um, there's a question about, is Walker beneficial? Um, 
if if really nothing else helps, maybe. But I really don't like to see people on a walker because usually people that have a walker tend to baby themselves. You, you gotta work work your way through it. You gotta get up and move. Um, another thing with a walker. Mm-hmm. Another thing with a walker is if if you get what I had done because I had both the breast augmentation with the lift and the tummy tuck. With a walker, you can't put the pressure on your arms. You yeah. can't use your arms to hold yourself up. So if you're using a walker, you you risk blowing incisions inside. So I don't think a walker is a good idea. I say just yeah. take it slow. Just go slow. That's all you have to do. Like honestly, life, if you stop and think about it, is actually really long. It's us that speeds it up. So you have your whole life after your surgery to enjoy it and to take care of it. So you know, don't rush the speed the the healing process because you're anxious to get at it, you know, it's coming, it came, it's here, you just have to take care of it. Uh, that's an important point. You know, you spent all this time and effort to get here, you spent all this money getting it done, don't mess it up by being impatient. Very, mm-hmm. very important that you follow post-op instructions, realize that once the surgery is over, it's not over. Now you go to the recovery phase, and that's a very important phase because no matter how hard I've tried, or the other surgeon tried to give you a beautiful result, if you don't follow post-op instructions, you can totally destroy everything. So mm-hmm. be very, very careful. Big time. I will say for me, what worked for um, my weight loss was the combination of cardio and weightlifting. I don't think without mixing them together, I would have gotten to where I have. And if anybody wanted to try it out, they're called kangoo jumps. I'll show you what they look like. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's a bouncy boot. Um, they take 80% of the impact off your joints and everything. And so they're really good for your, like your adrenal system. They basically, they take the impact. They were developed for, for sports injuries. Mm -hmm. And so people could get back to running and doing all that stuff without having to worry about the impact. So because it's a rebound sport, it burns up to 25% more calories. So I don't know if, if you're stuck running on the treadmill and you're sick of it or running outside maybe look into kangoo jumps so around the nipple you can't see at all like that's gone the down one pretty much gone and the underneath one is invisible and the tummy one's a little bit darker but i'm also a darker skin person so i do scar a little darker at first but it goes away so honestly like even when i'm wearing a bathing suit or something like that the scars don't affect me i'm not self-conscious about it at all um i don't feel like anybody stares at them ever i don't feel like they're a big deal for me personally they were never a big deal. And there was a question about non-invasive fat extraction. So non-invasive treatments are always hot topic. Nobody wants scars. Nobody wants to go to surgery. So people want non-invasive fat reduction, non-invasive skin tightening. Uh, and bottom line is we are yet to discover any technology that can really replace proper surgical skin removal and skin excision. There, there are things out there uh, that do non-surgical fat melting. Extre- even though they were extremely, extremely ineffective. The amount of difference you see is so minimal that frankly, I, I'm not sure if it's worth the money. It's for, you know, maybe someone who's very, very skinny and it gets a little, little pouch in there, but it is not a replacement for a liposuction or for weight loss that should come before liposuction. And there's no non-surgical treatment that's gonna tighten up the skin like a body lift or a tummy tuck will do. <laughs> um, understand that you will have scars and there are some mm-hmm. people for whom the scars are the worst thing ever. If you're one of those people, then maybe surgery is not for you. And that's perfectly fine. We're all a little bit different. We all have a little bit different preferences. Think about it. And if you're able to accept the scars, then you're a good candidate for surgery. I seen a question about scar cream. I did use a scar uh-huh. cream. Um, I used the one that um, Dr. Six sells. I probably didn't use it as much as I should have, but it does work very well. The number one thing you want to do is silicone, anything with silicone, whether it's silicone gel, silicone cream, silicone tape and two you want to avoid stressing the scar when i say stress i mean putting too much tension and stress and abrasion and shear on the scars scars that are just sitting there without any interruption heal beautifully so that is the goal with post-surgical scars is to try to put as little tension and shear on your scars as possible how did other people around you respond to your to the react to you having surgery did you get support did people kind of ask you questions did they give you an evil eye what happened? Oh yeah, for sure. So, I mean, there was a few people that were like, oh, why are you doing that? You know, you don't need to do that. 
And you know what? I don't need to do it, but I want to do it. And I want to do it for me. So I did. But most people were like, oh, my God, that's so good. I want to do it. And then as soon as somebody knows that you've done it, they're like, they're in there like a dirty shirt. They want to know everything. They want to know, like, from start to finish because they want to go and do it, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, Absolutely. I'm totally one for giving all my knowledge out. If anybody ever comes and asks me, I tell them all the time, like, do it. Uh, our time is going to run real quick, so I want to put one last point about this. It is really important, guys, that you, if you decide to have surgery, that you have good support system around you and people are going to support you. There's nothing worse than have someone, you know, looking after you and helping out who's just always pushing you down and saying, why did you do this? You don't have to do this. You don't need no. to do this. And just, and, and that mental, mental strain that's going to put on you is really going to in interfere with your recovery and you yourself are going to feel crappy. And these are the people that often come back and, and actually complain about the results when I can barely see anything because they're at home and their, their mother, father, or sister is pointing to some little imperfections. They look, look how horrible that looks. And, and in the meantime, you may look amazing. So I'm going to leave it at that before the time drowns out. I want to take this little moment that's left to say thank you, Desiree, for joining us, sharing your story with us. Thank uh, you for, for having me. On. And again, guys, if you have questions, if you haven't answered them yet, please DM us, put them in, in the comments below, and we'll be happy to answer. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.